Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry, and today I'm going to continue my Crochet Yoshi doll tutorial. This video is part 2 of this series. You can find the link to part 1 of this tutorial, or the written pattern on Ravelry, in the description below. So now I'll just continue where I left off, and begin creating the arms of my doll. The arms are fairly simple. I've started with a magic circle with 6 stitches of single crochet. Then I increased every stitch for one row. Now the doll's arm is a good width. To lengthen the forearm, I'll single crochet for two more rows without any more increases. I've finished my two rows of single crochet. Now, this is an optional step, you don't have to do this, but in order to make a little dip at the elbow of my doll's arm, I'll decrease two times in the next row, one per side. Then I'll continue to lengthen the arm the rest of the way, by single crocheting another 6 rows. Alright, I've reached the end of another 6 rows. Now the arm is a good length. So to end the arm, I'll slip stitch to the first stitch of the last row to end the row. Cut off a long tail of yarn, and I'll use that tail to sew the arm to the armhole later. Then I'll just repeat the process to create another arm. Before I sew on the arms, I'll make a wire skeleton for my doll, and place it inside the body. You can see a more detailed tutorial for how I make my wire skeletons for my dolls in the description below. But for this doll, I made a skeleton with a 2 inch neck, a 1 inch back, and a 1 and a half inch tail, with two two and a half inch arms at the base of the neck, and two four and a half inch legs at the base of the spine.
Then after unstuffing the doll that I unfortunately stuffed in the previous video, I inserted the skeleton through one of the leg holes, with the arms pointed up as though putting on a shirt. Then I slipped each arm through each armhole. I also made sure to pull the neck of the skeleton up into the doll's head. Then I made sure each of the skeleton's legs was in the appropriate leg hole, and I pulled the tail skeleton into the tail of the doll. Now I can add the fiber fill back to the doll. I'll also add a bit of fiber fill to the arms. And slip them over the wire skeleton's arms. And sew them down around the armhole. Next I'll create the legs. I'm going to work the stitches of my doll's leg into each of the six skipped stitches of the leg hole, each stitch of the chain four at the leg hole, and around two posts of each single crochet stitch on either side of the chain four. This will make the doll and the legs look more like one continuous piece of fabric as opposed to one piece sewn onto another. But if you want to make your life easier, you could just begin the leg with a foundation chain of 12, and sew the leg to the leg hole when you're done but I'll work my stitches directly onto my doll. Of course, this will make things a bit tricky, since we'll be working around not only the legs of the wire skeleton, but also all those bobby pins we put in to mark the stitches around the leg holes. Luckily, we'll be removing each bobby pin as we work this row. As you can see, I've already completed one leg, just so that there's less marked stitches to work around, and because each leg is worked exactly the same way. So first, I'll pull up a loop into the first of the six skipped stitches that I made at the leg hole. And chain one to act as the first stitch of the row. Then single crochet into each of the remaining six skipped stitches.
Next, single crochet into the first marked stitch, which was the post of the first of the two single crochet stitches that I made at either side of the chain four at the leg hole. and remove the first bobby pin. Next, I'll single crochet into each of the four marked chains that I made at the leg hole. and remove each bobby pin. Then single crochet one around the post of the other single crochet stitch that I marked on the other side of the chain four. And remove the last bobby pin at the leg hole. Now I've created 12 stitches around the base of the leg. Now I'll lengthen the leg with seven more rows of single crochet. Alright, I've finished with seven more rows of single crochet. Now I'll add a bit of fiber fill to the leg. Then I'll begin to create the foot at the bottom of the leg using increases and decreases. To begin the foot, I'll increase three times at the front of the leg, and increase three times at the back of the leg, and single crochet normally into the remaining stitches of the row, for just one row. So I'll increase the first three stitches,
then single crochet until I reach the back of the leg. Then here at the back, I'll increase the next three stitches. Then single crochet until the end of the row. Then I'll increase three times the front of the leg and single crochet into the remaining stitches of the row for just one row to continue to lengthen the foot. Next, I'll start to decrease three times at the back of the leg to create the heel, and I'll again single crochet into the remaining stitches of the row. This I'll do for two rows. Then, to end the foot, I'll decrease three times at the front of the leg and decrease three times at the back of the leg, and single crochet into the remaining stitches of the row for just one row. Before I finish up the leg completely, I'll add some fiber fill to the doll's leg.
Next, I decreased three more times so that the hole at the bottom of the foot would be small enough to sew closed. Then I just slip stitched to the next stitch of the row. Cut off a long tail of the yarn. And used the tail to sew the bottom of the foot closed. Again, repeat the same thing to create another leg on the other leg hole, which I've already done. Now I'll create the circles that go over my doll's cheeks, using my white yarn this time. First, I'll start with another magic circle of six single crochet stitches total. Then, I'll increase for two rows. Slip stitch to the first stitch to end the row. Cut off a long tail of yarn and use the long tail to sew the cheek to the face. Then repeat the same thing to make another circle. While holding the mouth and the nose together to close the mouth, place the circle over the hole at the cheek, with the center aligned with the corner where the white part of the mouth meets the green corner of the nose. First, I'll pin these in place. Then I'll sew them down. I'll sort of use the cheeks to shape the head a little bit by tucking parts of the nose and cheek under the circle. I can't really explain exactly how I did this, but here's what it looks like when finished. Afterward, I ended up putting a bit of fiber fill inside the cheeks to help with the shape, but it would have been way easier if I had added the fill before I sewed the spot on completely. Now that I'm done with the cheeks and I've sewn them on, I can create the upper lip in between where I placed each cheek on the upper jaw. First, I'll count the stitches of the lower lip that I already created in between where I placed both cheeks on the lower jaw. This number may vary. I had eight stitches of lower lip showing on my doll. Then I'll create the same amount of stitches as I had in the lower lip to create the upper lip. So I'll pull up a loop in the bottom right side of the nose, right next to where I placed the right cheek with the doll upside down. Then I'll work a row of single crochet from the right side to the left side of the face, 
around the stitches of the nose, around the very bottom where you would expect for the upper lip to be. Then once I've made the correct amount of stitches, I'll slip stitch the next stitch of the nose, right next to where I placed the other cheek on the left side of the face. Then cut off the yarn, and sew in the ends. Of course, if you're working left-handed, you should do this in reverse. Begin at the bottom left side of the nose with the doll upside down, and work from left to right. Now that both the upper and lower lip are made, I can create the piece that goes inside the mouth using my red yarn. First, I'll chain three for the foundation chain. And chain one more for the first stitch of the row. Now I wanna increase the first stitch two times. To increase the first stitch, I wanna work into the same chain of the foundation chain that I chained up from to make the first stitch. So I'll work into the second chain from the hook. So single crochet two times into the second stitch from the hook to count as two increases in the first side of the first chain of the foundation chain. Then single crochet one in the next stitch. Then increase the first side of the next stitch two times by single crocheting three times into that stitch. Then increase the other side of the same stitch two times by turning the work and single crocheting three times on the other side of the same chain. single crochet in the next stitch, then increase the other side of the first chain of the foundation chain two times by single crocheting three times on the other side of the chain. So there should be six stitches worked into each side of the foundation chain with one stitch in between, and there should be a total of 14 stitches in the row. Now the basic oval shape for the inner mouth is made to make the corners of the mouth pop out more. First, I'll slip stitch in the next three stitches, and single crochet in the next stitch at the corner of the inner mouth. Then again, slip stitch into the next six stitches. and single crochet in the next stitch at the other corner of the inner mouth. Then slip stitch in the last three stitches of the row.
slip stitch to the first stitch of the row to end the row, cut off a long tail of the yarn, and use that tail to sew the inner mouth to the inside of the doll's lips. I'll make sure to always put the needle back through the same spot that I brought it out when sewing at the white part to keep the red from showing up on the white. And I'll do the same thing when sewing the green part, so that the red doesn't show up on the green. Now it's starting to look more like a Yoshi. We just need to add a few more finishing touches and this doll will be complete. Let's do that in part 3. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a like and share it on social media. If you want to see more doll tutorials, you can find a playlist at the end of this video, or check in the description below. And if you'd really like to help out the channel, you can donate to my Patreon. You can get some pretty cool perks through Patreon, like seeing my videos early, access to some of my prototype patterns, and discounts in my Ravelry store, depending on your level of donation. You can find out more about that at patreon.com slash fairyrings. You could also subscribe and click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!